Oi, oi, what's up, you bastards? Here is Ashen gameplay reaction. It's not really a new game. It's not any kind of new revelation, but I did not see this game at all so far. Some of you, I think, mentioned this while I was streaming something else. But it just slipped my mind and definitely slipped under my radar. So today I, I've stumbled upon Gamescom gameplay video that's about 11 minutes long and I'm going to react to it, see what this game is all about. It's supposed to be a Souls-like game with co-op element as well. I didn't see any PvP elements, only they say co-op, which means you can have help from other players. And that supposedly no two gameplay experiences are alike, which means the world is altered in many ways. Is it depending on your actions or just the world itself? We don't know these tidbits yet, but it's supposed to be a really promising game from the people that saw it live. I'm definitely interested in every Souls type game, so let's see what this is all about. Here we go. These guys, Aurora 44, I think this is their first game. I didn't see any games from them. Ashen is an open world action RPG featuring stamina based combat and passive multiplayer. Your journey starts in a dark world that suddenly becomes filled with light and you quickly learn your goal is to find and protect the source of light. Dark world suddenly that suddenly became full of light. Alright, why is that? Supposedly Marco Lawrence from the Broken Empire trilogy is Helping them write the story. Your first task leads you to a vagrant faction, which you will need to defeat to eventually found your town. That's definitely a good thing. So the game has the cartoonish style, unlike Dark Souls that's got more of real, how can I say it, normal world style. Combat looks faster than traditional Dark Souls combat, it looks good, solid. It plays fluidly and now I've seen for the first time that we do not have eyes. What's wrong with our eyes? Maybe because the world was dark so no one has got eyes anymore? Why would we care about the light then? Just some <laughs> questions. Give me my hammer. So I might restore the beat of this Traditionally mysterious NPC is like a soul series. Bind your spirit to this place. Why would you hate on eyes, developers? Eyes are beautiful. God damn, he almost hit the main character. Easy with that hammer, blind boy. Your town will function as your home base, and as you help characters in the world, they will start moving into your town, they will build houses, and they will offer you crafting services. That means every time you come back to town, your town might have grown in different ways. Okay, interesting. It's one thing having NPCs around the bonfire, it's another having a whole town. Throughout the game, your town represents your progression and who you've chosen to complete quests for out in the world. Some of the crafting options you can get access to include potion crafting, weapon upgrading and a special talisman crafting option which will give you access to various different bonuses. Okay, classic crafting. We aspect. really want players to build relationships with the characters we designed and so when you're sent out on quests, these characters actually join you. This is where passive multiplayer comes into play. You might be running around the world and run into the characters you're doing a quest for, but this might actually be another player. To keep players immersed, the other player will always appear as one of the quest givers. <laughs> Interesting. This means you won't be able to see the other player's equipment or character customization. There are no chat systems in the game, and we really want players to focus on the personalities and stories of these quest givers. 
It is also entirely possible that players run into each other and immediately go their separate ways. These brief encounters is also important to building meaningful relationships with our characters. That's cool. Uh, when you can. This doesn't mean you can only play Ashen in multiplayer. When there's no multiplayer connection to be found, an AI actually takes over these quest givers and the experience stays the same. Okay, but can they help us get to tougher spots? Like in that one, where we could pick up that artifact. Or is it completely locked out unless we play with the second person? I just don't like playing with others, so am I going to be locked out? Out of that type of content? That could help me a lot. I like the impact of the hits. I mean, combat looks really good, I like Throughout it. the game you'll need the help of a companion, whether it's another player or an AI, to reach secret areas or enter dungeons. As you progress through the story, you run through different environments, fight stronger encounters, and see giant creatures, like the giant Diasaur flying around the world. Oh, cool. The world looks beautiful. I don't like cartoonish style, I like more Dark Souls type style, but I cannot say a bad thing about the world. And graphically, the game looks solid. More vivid, more colorful Dark Souls. There are two major factions in Ashen. On the one hand you have the Listeners, a faction of giants who build monolithic structures and worship their matriarch. On the other hand you have the Lotharians, a prestigious human faction with a twisted king. There are only two factions. Does that mean only two enemy types or...? Because Ashen has a stamina based combat system, we focus on making the controls as responsive as possible. This lets you manage your actions in a fun way in all kinds of situations. The game does really look responsive. I mean, combat looks fun. Really, really fun. Question is also how much diversity is there with weapons, attacks, and so on. giant blind person so on them there's not much of impact with our strikes not which makes sense you encounter in ashen is hostile there are passive creatures throughout the world like roamers as well <laughs> cute i mean you can call that cute. As quests push you further through the game you'll learn more and more about the history of the world and how it collapsed You'll learn the history through rich environments and the many NPCs you encounter on your journeys. So there's a lot of lore. Encounters out in the world become more complicated as you progress, with ambushes, melee and ranged combat to keep you on your toes. Now this does not look easy, I have to admit. So does these AI quest givers help you in acquiring those items that were otherwise inaccessible. If that's the case, then they really did cover that aspect. There are secrets hidden all over the world and you have some special mechanics available to find them all, like spear travel. When you explore, you might find different types of gear and rare crafting materials, which you can take back to your town to upgrade weapons, for instance. That was cool. 
The world is massive and what better way to travel around than flying on the back of a baby dinosaur. <laughs> okay, I agree with that. Well, maybe a dragon would be a far better option, but that's just me. I love dragons. So there's a fast travel system. That is good. No tedious going back and forth. Ashen doesn't have a traditional leveling system or experience system, so all your power will come from the items you craft and unlock. Wait, so there are no stats, no attributes, nothing. As you become stronger, you'll be able to complete larger dungeons throughout the game and defeat the giant bosses that await at the very end of these dungeons. Okay, this is the first huge downside because in RPGs that I play I like a lot when I can adjust attributes so that I can do more damage or focus my builds for something specific. It seems like this is completely gear based progression. Character progression I mean. Which I'm not entirely sold on. Light is an important mechanic in Ashen, and you'll often find yourself exploring dark environments with your trusty lantern. Alright, it's not so dark that you need a lantern. Get that shield back up. Are you mental? Oh wow, look at that enemy. Cool. One difference that I've noticed from Dark Souls, comparing Dark Souls to this, is that this game tends to throw m many more enemies than Dark Souls at you. And they tend to die faster or maybe it's because this guy is so upgraded which i can see from the stamina and health bar that everyone dies fast or it just might be a general case with the game i honestly prefer less enemies and more sturdy tougher opponents that are tougher to kill on their own like those in dark souls like those uh, knights with halberds and so Dungeons also offer tons of areas to explore and beautiful vistas looking out over the world. Black Knights, yeah, those were the ones. And it suddenly ends. Maybe this is not a full video. Ah, who knows? I've seen enough. So, Ash. I'm intrigued, I think this game's got a lot of potential, we've seen a lot of it, 10 minutes are enough to make a judgement, and I can see that this is going to be a good game, is it going to be a great game, or fantastic game, or slightly above average game now, that remains a question. I'm hoping the game will release soon, it says 2018, but I'm not so sure about that. As always, I would like them to polish the game to the fullest and then release when it's ready, other than just giving us a half-baked product that needs 20 patches just to work normally. What else to add? Really not much. I like how the combat is done, though I don't like the amount of enemies being thrown at you. World looks amazing. Very intriguing. There's going to be a lot of lore scattered around, typical like in Dark Souls, maybe that's subtle lore. And I'm also expecting a decent story, since they have backup in that department. Well, that would be it. That session for you. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching and see you soon.